Hello and welcome to the next video of my World's 2022 preview series. We're going to cover all 24 teams. Yesterday I covered Isaris Gaming and now we're covering Gen G, the complete opposite end of the spectrum. Honestly, I do believe there is a world where Gen G win the tournament and Isaris finish last. It just so happens that they are two of the five teams that are, you know, locked into worlds and we know that they're not going to be in, you know, we know Isaris is in play-ins. We know Gen G are the one seed from the LCK. So with these sort of certainties, these are the teams we're going to cover first as, you know, the rest of the teams lock themselves in to the tournament. Um, in this series, I'll cover all 24 teams. I'll do a video on each role, ranking the um, players in that role, 1 through 24. Um, and then I also have a predictions for play-ins and then, uh, group stage when we get there. So if you'd like to join us on this journey, not only myself, but everybody subscribe to the channel in the discord. We have quite a few active members there. If you'd like to um, hang out, uh, sometimes there's watch parties. If a mod wants to do it and things like that, um, you know, all sorts of stuff going on. So subscribe to the channel, join the discord. Um, if you are interested in esports betting and things like that, Later today or tomorrow, I'm going to upload a video about YouTube memberships. I'm going away from the Patreon I was using and doing YouTube memberships where you can have priority in the comment section as well as um, being able to see videos where I do a little bit of extra content where I predict the winners of games going into Worlds. I'm hitting at about 70%. And then um, also NFL American football content um, for those that are interested. So stay tuned for that later on you know today or tomorrow um but i also had a 12 16 video go out earlier today as well so if you missed that it's going to be at the end in the uh outro so gen g uh won the lck in very very convincing fashion over t1 they went um six and one only needed seven games to win the lck um coaches score Former KT jungler, he has went to Worlds twice as a player, finishing uh, third and fourth in, oh, going 13 and eight, finishing um, fifth through eighth in both 2015 and 2018. So this is his first uh, look at international um, competition as a coach. I do believe that that may be, looking at this team, it has no real weaknesses on the rift. Maybe coaching becomes the weakness um, off the rift that, you know, in a best of five when they're drafting and things like that, maybe they struggle. Um, honestly, that is the only way in hell I think this team really hits a wall outside of JDG. Um, JDG, I think, are their toughest competition, and it's because the way JDG plays versus the way Gen G plays. Gen G plays a very slow, methodical, macro-based game that is literally going to choke you out like a python. Um, truly. So in top lane, you have Doran. He had a 4.8 uh, KDA, 8.3 CS per minute in the seven games of playoffs. I highlight playoff stats instead of regular split stats because playoff stats, you know, take out the worst teams, obviously. So they're not inflated. 62.7 KP, 20.2 damage share, 494 damage per minute. On average, he was ahead significantly in his lane of 15 minutes. I believe a thousand gold difference. Um, he had one solo kill, played three champions in seven games. I believe Aatrox was his most played. Um, Doran is more of a weak side top laner. That is his job on this team. Um, it is very one-dimensional in that way, and we do have to understand that. But when you look at the entire team, it does make sense that he is on the weak side. Um, I mean, when you have arguably uh, best mid laner <clears throat> or best player in the world and then the best AD carry in the world on the team, it does make for top lane getting kind of the short end of the stick. Uh, he's been to Worlds in 2020, finishing 5th through 8th with DRX, I believe. They went 4-5 and five on that trip. He had a 2-2-9 KDA, 8-6-6 CS per minute, and a 64-4 KP. Those are the only relevant stats that I can cross-reference between Games of Legend and um, Leaguepedia. Leaguepedia doesn't do damage share, and um, Games of Legend... I mean, I, damage, I feel like, is an important stat. So, uh, unfortunately, they don't have it. But, nevertheless, you look at this, you say to yourself, 866 CS per minute. That's very good in the top lane in general, let alone at an international event. So, Doran actually did very well the first time around. We'll see if he can follow that up. He died too much. But, in lane, he did very well. And, and we have to respect that. 
as they um, go into the tournament. I believe this team definitely is capable of winning. So, Peanut, by far the most experienced player on the team. He's been around a long time. He had a 6-1 KDA, 5-6 CS per minute, both very good. 73-6 KP, so he's farming a little bit above 5.5, which is good because he has over a 70 KP. So, he gets into fights, he farms, he gets his gold, and he creates for the team. 12.2 damage share. That is the case with jungle right now. A lot of junglers playing facilitator champions. That is Peanut's style. 304 damage um, per minute. He had a mixed uh, at 15. I believe he was ahead in gold, but behind in XP or vice versa. Um, given that he's facilitating often, that, that's not a surprise. One solo kill, four champions in seven games. Um, I mean... Peanut is a facilitator, 110%. If you missed my 1216 video earlier, I mentioned how the Poppy nerf probably affects Gen G more than most other teams. Um, I feel like Peanut, that was one of his better champions in summer. Obviously, being around the block, he can play pretty much anything at this point. Obviously, also, though, to various levels. So you have to acknowledge that. Um, but, he, I mean, very good player. And when I think of Gen G, and you may say, why do you not have top as like equal competition to Gen G's JDG. And it's like, because I feel like Top and Gen G play a very similar brand of League of Legends, um, as well as EDG. So, I mean, I just think Gen G play that game better. Um, where JDG plays some real, like, aggressive league, which is something that uh, Gen G, I don't think, are prepared for at all. Um, and I, I mean, they can prepare for it in scrims and, and things like that. But um, I don't know if you're going to get that vibe until you play JDG or you scrim like BCS teams, honestly. Um, I mean, I, Gen G are way better than Saigon Buffalo and GAM Esports, but I feel like the style of play is more similar to JDG than, you know, the other LPL teams and definitely the LCK teams. Um, Peanut went to Worlds in 2016, finishing third, fourth, won MSI 2017. Finished second in Worlds 2017, both of those with T1. 2018 MSI would finish second. 2020 Worlds finished ninth through 12th with LGD from the LPL. He is 49 and 26 at international events. 343 KDA, 5 CS per minute, 67.5 KP. Um, when it comes to these stats, you have to Matt, think back. He's been playing since 2016 at international events. So, there have been other, there have been metas, multiple metas, I believe, actually, where he had under four CS per minute at these international events, because that was just the case of the um, the tournament. So in the meta at the time, so um, just a solid player. Four two six, is, I mean uh, three four three KDA is is pretty telling, and so is the win rate forty nine and twenty six. He's been on great teams. Um, now he is the um, you know veteran of this team. And it's definitely uh, proved dividends for them right now. We'll see how it does at international events. Um, I mean, shoot, Peanut and Score were against each other, right? So, definitely interesting situation to monitor. In mid, we have Chovy. I consider him the best player in the world. Um, he had a 15 KDA and a 9.7 CS per minute in the LCK playoffs. 74 KP, 30.5 damage share, light, leading the team. 747 damage per minute. He was ahead by a wide margin at um, 15 minutes. He had three solo kills, played three champions in seven games. Chovy's cracked. Um, it just is what it is. Uh, 2019 Worlds. He So what's interesting is I don't, he might be the first player to go to Worlds four consecutive years with four different teams. Um, I really want to look into if that is a first. 2019, he finished 5th and 8th with Griffin, which I still believe Griffin, on paper, turned out to be um, the best identifiers of talent ever. Um, if you look at the players they had on 2019, Griffin, and then the fact that they had, like, Kanavi, uh, like, under contract and couldn't didn't use him, like, honestly, like, 2019 Griffin... They had the the um, they had the best eye for talent. That honestly, I mean, look at it now. Look at that team now. Sword, kind of iffy in top lane. He is the worst player of the team, right? Like Tarzan is cracked. Chovy is cracked. Viper is cracked. Lehens is cracked. 
Kanavi is cracked. Like, the whole damn team is cracked. And then you look and you say, oh, well, they have, like, UCAL and Untara. And, yeah, these guys aren't great. But the fact of the matter is, UCAL is doing okay in the LPL still. Like, you can go down the list of players they had. It was really, really something. I might do a video about them during um, the off season. So, 2019 Worlds with Griffin, 5th, 8th. 2020 Worlds with DRX, 5th, 8th. 2021, last year with HLE, Hanwha Life. Yes, the team that finished like 1-16 in, in summer. Went to Worlds last year with Chovy in mid, deft at 80 carry, and 5th uh, through 8th again. So Chovy is 21-16 in at Worlds, 3-2-1 KDA, 9-2-6 CS per minute, 56 KP. Um, definitely takes a, um, I mean, he drops off a bit at an international event going from what we would say is oftentimes nine and a half, nine point seven 9.7 for the playoffs, but 9.5 and up CS per minute drops a bit at international events. He has struggled to take over. Um, I mean, if top esports finishes second, we may have a chance to see Chovy versus Knight again, um, which is definitely something that we I mean, I'd love to see, um, see it twice, and then maybe later in a best of five. Um, I mean, Chovy and, and Knight are, are definitely very good. So, Chovy, very good player. Nothing to, bad to say about him. In bot lane, you have Ruler, maybe the best AD in the world right now. Definitely top um, three without any question whatsoever. 7.3 KDA, 10.5 CS per minute, 70.6 KP. 27-1 damage share, 693 damage per minute, mixed results on the at 15. Um, I believe he's ahead in um, gold, but behind in XP. Did not get a solo kill, played three champions, excuse me, three champions in seven games. Five of those games being on Zeri, which is nerfed. Obviously, Ruler can play pretty much anything, just like Chovy. So that's not going to be all that effective. Um, not all, I mean, won't affect them all that much, which I went in into detail in um the video earlier today but ruler very good uh 2016 world second 2017 worlds they would win alongside core jj in bot lane um 2018 worlds 13th through 16th 2020 fifth through eighth 2021 third fourth so we're um ruler's never been to msi but he's been to worlds every year since 2016 except 2019 so we'll see how he does um, I, like I said, I expect them to be very good. 42 and 22 at international events, 360 KDA, 943 CS per minute, 67.5 KP. Obviously, like I said, with similar with Peanut, many different metas and Ruler has stood the test of time. He, like, that's the reason why he can play anything. Um, he has stood the test of time. Still not an older player. Has a couple or, I mean, a few good years left in him. Lahens alongside him, 7-1 KDA, 80.7 KP. He would clear one ward every four minutes on average in bot lane. That actually makes sense because Genji's bot lane is so dominant and would place down nine wards every 10 minutes. Um, I mean, vision is important for supports, right? So what other stats are you going to pick? Um, played five champions in seven games, including Singed. Um, Singed is Lahens' pocket pick. Definitely something to respect going into the uh, international event. 2019 Worlds, he was Griffin's support, like I said, going 5th uh, through 8th. They went 7-4 and four at Worlds that year. He had a 4-5-3 KDA and 79 KP. Um, now, you may say to yourself with these KDAs, those aren't what Leaguepedia says. You're right. I um, When I do my um, KDA, I believe assists are worth half as much as kills. Just how it is just how it is um, I don't think kills and assists are created equally um, and some people can say oh well somebody just last hits and they get the kill it's like yeah but somebody could just get one auto attack in or one little heal and they have an assist so really like yeah so um, kills are more important than assists at least when it comes to KDA so that's it for Gen G. I think that they have a very, very strong chance at winning this thing. I have them first in the power rankings right now. And the way that they beat T1, there is no way in hell they're coming down from first. So when I do my power rankings tomorrow instead of Thursday, um, spoiler alert, they're first. Um, because what they did to T1 was very dominant. 
Um, and I don't think JDG, unless, well, actually, because JDG doesn't play till Thursday, Thursday we won't know um, for the power rankings then. But JDG will have to 3 0 top to overtake Gen G. And even then, they have to do it convincingly. So, thank you for watching this video. Um, there will be a playlist eventually if there's not one already. Um, so, if you want to look through all the videos leading up to Worlds, you can do that. Um, around me, you're going to see the video from earlier today as well as the Isaris video if you missed it. Thank you for watching. Like the video if you like it. Subscribe to the channel for daily League of Legends content. Join as a member if you would like to support me. And uh, I hope you come back for more content.